Hey, what's up team? My name is Kevin Rubens and I've been living with AS for the past 12 years. I am a rehabilitation scientist and physiotherapist and I started this episode uh, just to make sure that I'm going to share my experience with what I've tried, which scientific tools I use to make sure that my quality of life is at its highest. So I'm fighting this disease very successfully right now. And that's what I thought, okay, let's try to put this out as much information, the stuff that I'm trying to make sure that you can also take back your quality of life. Okay, super important. Um, first things first, this, my disclaimer, this is not medical advice. Make sure you always go to your professional doctor, rheumatologist or whoever um, before starting anything you have heard on this podcast. That's very important. As you see, I'm here in my gym. The noise can be very weird. Maybe the my, my phone will drop down because the construction is very dangerous. So a lot of stuff can go wrong in my first episode. The more I do this, the more I will find uh, a perfect balance so that you can also enjoy this uh, audio or video um, as much as I do. Okay, so first episode, I'm very excited. A couple of rules, I am not a native spe speaking English person. That means I can make mistakes uh, while talking. I'm gonna try to talk as slow as I can. That's already very important. Um, again, there might be some noise in the background, but I hope you still understand and see me well. So I thought, okay, the winter starts. Let's start the first episode to bring the sun a little bit to you and talk about vitamin D. Vitamin D is also called 25-hydroxy vitamin D, okay? So that's what you would see if you would, for example, get a blood test. 25 bracket open O, H, close the bracket D, okay? So that's what we're talking about today. It's a fat-soluble vitamin. That means you will need fats to make sure that this gets absorbed in the body. Later, we'll talk a little bit about this as well. Now, why is this such an important um, vitamin or actually hormone um, because it helps with our immune system it also helps to um, absorb calcium from our gut so when we eat some form of calcium this will vitamin d will take this out and put it right into our bones where it should belong okay um, vitamin d also helps with muscle strength also helps with fatigue and just being energized and what else do we have here um inflammation as well so that's vitamin d vitamin d is important okay i'm gonna talk a little bit about the connection between vitamin d and ankylosing spondylitis because that's why we're here right so um there was a study that showed that if you have a chronic inflammatory disease spondyloarthritis um, rheumatoid arthritis whatever psoriatic arthritis you actually have lower levels of vitamin D or you are at higher risk of getting lower levels of vitamin D. That means we already need to keep this in mind that we are at risk to have lower levels of vitamin D. Okay. The next study showed that, um, that we have higher chances of developing depression than the normal population. I think we can all imagine why if you live with pain day in, day out, it's not really comfortable. Okay, so you just need to just imagine real quick, you in the winter versus you in the summer. For me, for example, in summer, I'm standing up very early. I'm outside the whole day. I'm full of energy because the sun is shining on me. In the winter, I like to sleep longer. I stay in bed. I feel a little bit like this winter depression. And that's what I wanted to already um, talk about. So vitamin D helps with this fatigue. That's important to know. Healthy levels of vitamin D helps with fatigue. Now there was a, a meta-analysis, so that's a very big study in 2015, and they found that higher levels of vitamin D were associated with lower disease activity. That means I have enough vitamin D in my blood, my disease activity, ankylosing spondylitis, is lower, okay, important. Number two, they found that if you have lower vitamin D levels, the bone mineral density, that's like a marker for how strong your bones are, are also lower, okay? We, as um, having ankylosing spondylitis, we already have 
higher chances of developing osteoporosis or it's a fancy name for actually very weak bones. So vitamin D helps with getting bones stronger. We have more chance to developing weak bones. Okay. So we need to already, this is another issue that we, we need to think about uh, when we have our disease. Okay. Another one, another study found that if you checked healthy people versus people with AS, that if you had sufficient levels of vitamin D, your CRP was lower. So CRP is a marker of systemic inflammation in the blood. It's called C-reactive protein. I think every one of you already heard this. So that means if you have, it's not, this is important with all those studies that it's observational. So they have a group of people, they observe them, they take their vitamin D levels, and then they observe their CRP levels. Okay, this is not that lower vitamin D will lower inflammation. No, this is just an observation. That's what we need to know as well with all those studies that I'm putting down right now. But it's a good idea to keep in mind because when they're related, it could be that they also affect each other. Important. Okay, so we also said a little bit about those CRP levels. So you have, if, if you see in people with higher levels of vitamin D, their inflammatory markers in the blood are also lower. Now, uh, another study found that there is also a relationship with cardiovascular problems. So we know that if you have ankylosing spondylitis, um, the chances of developing cardiovascular disease are also higher. Why? Because of the chronic inflammation, uh, the blood vessels, they don't like this, which can cause a lot of damage in the future. Now, there's also some studies that suggest that um, hypertension is very common in AS. So this is also something we need to keep in mind. The study here found that if there is adequate levels of vitamin D, the chances of um, having hypertension is lower. Again, this is an observation. Um, we know now with those four or five studies that vitamin D is super important. Okay. Um, so how, how much is high enough? Eh? Because we have, of course, some levels you need to uh, keep in mind. Um, so there was a study that said, if you have lower than 30 nanograms per millimol, NGA slash ML, you had an increased risk of all-cause mortality. That means you have an increased risk of dying from any cause with AS. And this was times 1.59. Now, the crazy thing is, if you are a male and you would have this below 30, your chances of dying from any disease increases by two. Very important, okay? Uh, especially when we know that more men are actually uh, being diagnosed with um, ankylosing spondylitis, even though it's harder to diagnose women. So I think right now they're coming very close to each other, but they say two for two males, one female will be diagnosed with ankylosing spondylitis. But maybe that's a good topic to discuss in the next time. Um, so these, the 30 is a very important number. Now, what are healthy levels of vitamin D? This depends a little bit on the laboratory you will do your testing. So for example, I took mine. Mine is healthy between 20 and 100 nanograms per milliliter. That means that the 30 is not uh, accounted for. So the 20 to 100 is for me not a good um, like ratio of, of, of getting your vitamin D levels. It should at least be 30 just to make sure that we decrease our all-cause mortality risks. Um, another study suggests that you need at least 40 nanograms per milliliter, and that's the bare minimum. I think we can agree, agree that this is, this is a good number, right? So my levels, for example, were 27.9. Um, and I feel good, I feel energized, I'm blah, close to pain-free. Um, but of course, there's more factors that are that you need to include. Uh, I also changed my whole lifestyle. So, but of course, like we said, vitamin D can help to increase your quality of life. So before we go any further, there are also risks of people who have, who can develop low levels of vitamin D. So we already know you and me probably have the, the situation right there. 
There's also people that breastfeed, just when you get older in general, uh, in general, and then we talk about this a little bit more, when you live far away from the equator. That means our body needs UVB radiation from the sun on the skin, from the skin, it will have this physiological uh, stuff that's going on, the organs, and then you will have this 25 hydroxy vitamin D in your blood. UVB is not always there. I live in Germany. UVB from the sun, you will not find between, let's say, October until March. Okay, That means I have around six months where I have no access to a natural source of vitamin D. In those summer months, of course, boom, there is vitamin D from the sun. This is important because the further away from the equator you live, the less UVB radiation you will have throughout the year. The closer, probably, if you live right on the equator, you have all year round uh, UVB radiation, which can keep your uh, vitamin D levels very, or in the healthy ranges. Important, super important. When you have darker skin, when you have limited fat absorption, if you remember vitamin D was a fat soluble vitamin that needs fat to absorb in the body, right? So if you have limited fat absorption, this can also be an issue. For example, disease of Crohn, which is also connected with ankylosing spondylitis, celiac disease, when you are obese, or when you've gotten a gastric bypass surgery, if you're taking statins, or if you're taking steroids to reduce inflammation. All stuff we need to keep in mind that can lower our chances of having, or increase our chances of having low vitamin D levels. How can we increase? So the first one is, of course, get in the sun as much as you can, if safe, of course. Um, important, you don't want to get burned. That is the most important. Every time you get burned, you will destroy DNA. We don't want our DNA to be destroyed because this can have detrimental effects in the future. Okay, so um, in the sun, best in the summer, of course, or in the winter, travel to a country close to the equator. Normally between 10 and 30 minutes should be sufficient. The less clothes you are wearing, the more skin uh, surface there is on this radiation, the faster you will get those, uh, through those um, or to those vitamin D levels. So that's again something that you can keep in mind. If you use sunscreen, there will be no radiation going through. That means there's also no vitamin D level that will um, start to increase in your body. Important, like I said, don't get burnt. The best way to get the fastest amount of vitamin D is during when the sun is at its highest point. Stay there for 10, 20 minutes in your underpants and then go out of the sun, uh, go in the shades or wear some longer clothes to make sure you're also protected from the sun. Um, that's number one, the sun. Number two is food. There are some foods that actually increase your vitamin D. Uh, for example, we have cod liver oil which is the highest. We have fatty fishes like salmon, we have eggs, and we have some mushrooms that can help to support to have uh, enough vitamin D in the blood. You can also, of course, supplement uh, with pills or with drops. I use drops. Um, they are from my brain effect. I can post this later. I have no affiliation to the brand, um, but I will just send a picture and then you can check it out yourself. It is around 5,000 IUs I take. Um, again, important, visit your doctor or professional or rheumatologist first before starting to take any of this information. Good. There is also something as too much. So you can have toxic levels of vitamin D. Uh, that's why blood work is the most important. So you go to your doctor, maybe now, maybe in a week, ask for a vitamin D test. Um, they are very cheap. And then you have your levels and then you can start by... Um, Increasing them if they are too low or just keep doing what you're doing um, to keep them in the healthy ranges to make sure we can increase our quality of life. Okay, um, I think that's it for today. So I'm going to try to keep them always short, 15 minutes, maybe 20 minutes maximum. Um, that's also, I think, easier for you guys to not waste too much time. But anyway, vitamin D is something very important. I hope in the future there will be some controlled studies where maybe 
people with ankylosing spondylitis will take a vitamin D supplement versus people who will don't. And then you can actually see better what the vitamin itself does in those people. But so far, I haven't found any. If you have found any, please let me know. That would be very nice. Um, anyway, if you have any questions regarding this, please uh, write me on YouTube here, on, on Instagram or whatever. I try to answer them as quickly as possible. Um, and then in the meantime, stay active, stay moving, and I'll see you soon. Ciao.